This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today, we're going to speak about what happens when an insured lies to his insurance company and when an insurance company decides that it can deny a claim based on that lie and ignore the opportunity to rescind a policy because rescinding a policy requires the insurer to return the premium, while if it simply denies a claim because of the insured's lie, it can keep the premium. Cesar Benitez appealed the trial court's entry of final summary judgment in favor of Universal Property and Casualty Insurance Company in a first-party property insurance dispute over a water damage claim. In Cesar Benitez v. Universal Property, an October 12, 2022 decision of the Court of Appeals of Florida, it was asked to interpret a statute and the policy wording to determine the effect of the insured's lies. In his application for a policy with the insurer, Benitez reported no previous losses on his property. However, after Benitez filed a claim for new damage, the insurer's inspector found signs of pre-existing damage and repairs. The insurer denied Benitez's claim, but continued to collect premiums from him for several years. Benitez then sued for breach of contract, and the insurer asserted as an affirmative defense, based on Section 627.409 of Florida statutes, which provide, quote, 1. Any statement or description made by or on behalf of an insurer or an annuitant in an application for an insurance policy or annuity contract, or in negotiations for a policy or contract is a representation and not a warranty, except as provided in Section 3, a misrepresentation, omission, concealment of fact, or incorrect statement may prevent recovery under the contract or policy only if any of the following apply. A the misrepresentation, omission, concealment, or statement is fraudulent or is material to the acceptance of the risk or to the hazard assumed by the insurer. Additionally, the insurer's policy allowed denial of coverage if Benitez, quote, intentionally concealed or misrepresented any material fact or circumstance two engaged in fraudulent conduct, or three made material false statements relating to this insurance. The insurer also moved for dismissal based on fraud on the court or in the alternative for summary judgment pursuant to Section 627.409 based on Benitez's material misrepresentations. At a hearing on the motion, Benitez did not dispute his failure to disclose the prior claim in both his policy application and discovery responses to interrogatories and sworn statements in his deposition. Benitez instead argued the insurer could not claim rescission as an affirmative defense because the insurer had continued to collect premiums from him for approximately two years after learning of the prior undisclosed claim. The insurer contended it sought only to deny coverage under Section 627.409 and not to rescind the policy. The trial court held that no genuine issue of material fact existed as to whether Benitez's failure to disclose the prior claim on his policy application or in discovery amounted to material misrepresentations such that the claim could be denied under the policy provisions and Section 627.409. In reaching its decision, the court noted 
that while six, section 627.409 provides that an insurer may seek rescission of a policy, the plain language of the statute alternatively allows for an insurance provider to deny coverage of an individual claim. When the statute is clear and unambiguous, courts will not look behind the statute's plain language for legislative intent or resort to rules of statutory construction to ascertain intent. The insurer's affirmative defense was based on the statute, and the insurer made clear at the summary judgment hearing that it was not seeking rescission of the policy pursuant to the statute, but was instead seeking the alternative remedy of denial of the claim. The trial court properly granted summary judgment on the insurer's denial of coverage of Benitez's claim based on material misrepresentations. An appellate court may affirm a trial court's decision so long as there is any basis which would support the judgment in the record. As a result, the appellate court did not need to determine whether a basis existed for denying the claim founded upon fraud of the court. In my opinion, rescission, although an equitable remedy, is one whereby both parties to the contract of insurance are put back in the position they were in before the policy came into effect and treats the insurance as if it never existed. An insurer who rescinds must therefore return the premium it collected because it was not entitled to collect a premium on a non-existent policy. However, by the terms of the policy actually issued and Florida statutes, if the insured lies about material facts, the insurer may simply deny the claim and leave the policy in force. As my mother, rest her soul, told me often, liars never prosper. This case proved her right. This video was adapted from my blog, Zelma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the link zelma.com slash blog and is available as a video on rumble.com and youtube.com. Please, if you view this video on YouTube or Rumble, click on the like button or the rumble button as you do. And please also consider subscribing to my Locals channel and to my Substack publications. Thank you for your attention.